Hi everyone, Jennifer Biederman here from Jennifer Biederman Jewelry and Biederman Art Studio. Welcome back to another tutorial. Um, I'm going to be doing a beginner's project and I'm going to be doing a bracelet. Um, I have been doing a lot of pendants and it's mostly like um, intermediate and advanced. I try to keep it simple, but I've been getting comments saying, you know, great comments saying great project, love it. Uh, but I won't attempt it because of, I'm just starting. So you know what, we're going to start uh, doing some simple bracelets and then I'm going to show you how to build on this, okay? Uh, I completed this today, I wrote a tutorial, I'm going to have it up soon before this video is posted. And um, what it is, it's really simple materials, you're going to need some 18 gauge dead soft wire, copper or silver. On this bracelet I used 24 gauge weaving wire uh, I just wanted to see the look it looks really substantial I actually like the the larger weaving wire on this but in the uh, bracelet we're gonna do we're gonna do one like this but I'm gonna use more wires and I'm using a smaller gauge a 26 gauge if you do not have 26 gauge weaving wire you can use 28 gauge just going to change the, the way the weave looks, but that's okay. It's the same principle on how to put the whole thing together. Now, this bracelet, I used eight base wires. In the bracelet we're going to do, we're using 10. Now, I know that seems daunting. Uh, beginner projects kind of want to do three wires and things like that, but this is beginner, okay? Uh, with a, a, a twist of adding a little bit more wires because it's the same procedure okay now you're gonna have to learn how to manage all these wires when you're making uh, bracelets uh, because you know if you're using just four wires the bracelet is gonna be teeny teeny tiny and you won't get something that looks like this so basically what we're doing is we're attaching all the wires together here then we're separating them so then we're gonna be managing uh, just five wires on this side and five wires on this side. Now, if you don't want to use 10 base wires, I would suggest go to eight, and then the next one is go to six, but it's going to look a little bit different, but I, I would do eight minimum. Um, I'm going to show you how to make jump rings, and I'm going to show you how to do this little clasp as well. And uh, with wire, um, I'm going to show you how to taper this down so that you don't have a big rectangle thing here and not know how to attach the clasp. Now, when I say we're going to build on this, building on it meaning um, how to embellish something like this. I think it looks fabulous like this. Just, uh, it's elegant. It's um, It's got something happening. It's a lot of curves and just really I think it's beautiful the way it turned out and the shape and everything but we will we're gonna learn after in another video is how to maybe add embellishment beads here once it's completed and then maybe um, we're gonna add a cab here okay on top not sure which one to use, the black one or the um, this one. But we're gonna do a simple wrap with these and I'm gonna show you how to attach it, okay? Um, so that's it. Now, materials, if you wanna do exactly what I'm doing today, 10 18 gauge dead soft wire, copper or silver, I cut mine 10 inches long each. You're going to need some weaving wire in this tutorial. I'm going to be using a 26 gauge. Again, you can use 24 gauge or you can use 28 gauge. Uh, these are the tools you're going to need. You're going to need two pairs of pliers uh, to open and close jump rings. And you're going to need a pair of flush cutters or just simple cutters. You will need something to create your jump rings with. I have this little, I know I don't know what it's called, I think it's a bail maker, I'm not sure, but it's steps. And you can get this at your local Michael store. Okay, you don't have to get anything 
uh, like expensive. Look, it says China here. I uh, invest in materials, not tools. But I am going to start investing in some good cutters and pliers. Um, you will need some round nose pliers. And that is to create these little loops at the end. And that's it. Okay, I'm going to keep this simple. I'm going to be going step by step. So for those of you who are more advanced and you just want to see how I put this together, you could totally fast forward because I'm really going to go step by step in this tutorial. Because um, I want it to be easy to follow and I don't want it, anyone being frustrated. And I'm going to give lots of tips on how to manage all these wires. Okay? Promise you it's going to be easy. Okay, so get your materials together and we're going to get started. All right, so let's get started. Now, the first weave we're doing, we're not, we're doing this at the end. We are gonna be doing this weave right here. And we're gonna do a half an inch. And how I um, measured all this, I'm making a seven and a half inch bracelet. If yours is bigger or smaller, you're gonna have to adjust your weave. You can always do half an inch with that weave, but then adjust over here, okay? Um, but I'm not gonna explain all that. You have to figure that out, but this is a seven and a half inch bracelet. Okay, so in my written tutorial, I'm gonna tell you to start two inches in. But yet you have all these wires to deal with and it can be frustrating, so this is a very important tip. We are gonna be starting up here and we're gonna shimmy it down, okay? So cut yourself your weaving wire. I'm using a 26 gauge. I cut myself about seven feet and if I need to add, I'm just gonna add. So instead of picking them up and start weaving, we're gonna pick up one wire at a time. And we're starting here, right? Right at the end. So put your weaving wire around the back, leave yourself a tail, something to hang on to, and you're gonna coil around this twice, just to anchor that weave in place, weaving wire in place. You will pick up wire two. Make sure that it's as close as possible here, leaving yourself a little bit of a channel, but close here. Just go up and over wire one and two, between wire one and two. Pick up the next wire. Up and over wire two and three, between wire two and three, compress. Pick up the fourth base wire. Now, for tension, I don't want you pulling this really tight. Okay, you want it just to slide into place. So I'm compressing with my finger and I'm just going to go up and over wire three and four, just letting it sit there. Then I'm going between wire three and four. You don't need to yank. You don't need to do any of that. And you don't want it too loose either. You just want it to be consistent. Push with your thumb up and over wire four and five between wire four and five. Pick up wire six. Up and over wire five and six between wire five and six. Picking up number seven. Up and over wire six and seven between wire six and seven. Now you're going to notice your weave going this way. Don't worry about that right now. Just get everything attached. Pick up wire eight. Up and over wire seven and eight between wire seven and eight. Next base wire, wire nine. Just 
set it right on top. Up and over both wires between both wires. Now this is where things change a bit so pay attention. I'm always adjusting my wires and I want them to be jumbled up. Nice channels here, close here. Picking up wire 10. Now I'm going up and over wire 9 and 10. Up and over wire 9 and 10. I'm not going to go between wire 9 and 10. I'm going to go between wire 9 and 8. Here. Why am I doing that? Because I'm just going to coil around wire 9 once. One coil. Okay. Then I'm going between... Oof, I don't have the wire numbers. Hold on. So 10, 9, 8. I'm going between 8 and 7. Now, in my tutorial, I am detailed about which wire we're going through because I number them 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 10. And then you're going to see, and if you're not counting, don't worry about it here. Let me move in. If you're not counting, you need to see where the last coil was. Whoops. The last coil is here. So, I need to go between these two wires. And then up and over that single wire. Oops, hold on a second. Working behind a camera here, so. Okay, and you're just gonna continue that. Go between the two wires so that you can coil up and around that wire. So I just did that one. Now I need to coil this one. So I'm going to go between these two wires. See now I'm looking at my camera and I'm not looking at my piece. Now can you imagine starting down here this would be like really frustrating. And I did that for many projects and I actually completed it, but really frustrating. Okay, so I just did that coil. Now I need to do this wire. So I'm going to go in between these two wires and up and over. Did that one, I need to do the next one. So I'm gonna go between these two wires. Now, again, I'm repeating myself in my tutorial. I'm naming the wires. Okay, now going between wire one and two, up and over wire two. All right, so this, even though I didn't finish with the bottom wire, this completes one rotation. So you want to compress. Now, to start the second rotation, by the way, this is called a modified sumac weave. And how do I know this? Because I didn't know what it was called and someone on another tutorial let me know what it was called. So it's a modifi modified sumac weave. So if you want more detailed uh, instructions, just type that in and I'll show you. But again, this is pretty detailed. Okay, now we're starting the second rotation. We're going to continue what we did in the first one. So we're going up two wires. So I'm coming around. I'm going to go up wire one and two. Between wire one and two. Up and over wire two and three between wire two and three, up and over wire three and four, between wire three and four, up and over wire four and five, between wire four and five. So that's what you're just gonna continue doing. 
and we go all the way to the top and then we work our way down again and we're going to do that for what did I write one inch um, I could say how many rotations I did but again you could be using a different wire weave gauge which will give you more rotations or less so once you get the hang of this it's gonna just flow and it's gonna go fast and I know we're using a lot of wires so we just need to pay attention where we're going and this is the most difficult part I think because we're dealing with all these wires, these base wires. Completes two rotations. And I'm just gonna continue up and over wire one and two. And like I said, I'm doing an inch. No, half an inch, half an inch, sorry. I have to look at my notes. Do this for half an inch ending with the single coils so let me work on this and don't worry about this being all up and down and all that because we're going to shimmy it down now this is just a little other tip if you want to take it into consideration because maybe some projects you're going to be using 20 base wires and then you're like you know even if you're starting here it's a lot so another little tip is you put the first wire up higher, the second one lower, third one higher, second one lower, third one higher, so you kind of know where you're at. See? You know where you're going in. But in this case, we're good like this. But you can do that if you wanted to. And you just push them back down. So don't do your weave too tight. Don't do it too loose. Just lay it on top and just do that and then doing that we're going to be able to shimmy this down no problem so let me work on this a bit and I'll be back and then we're going to do the next step where we're just going to be separating our wires and then working on five and five that's going to be a lot easier okay I'll be back okay so I did my half an inch okay and with my 26 gauge I did five rotations so I just count like this one two, three, four, five. Now I want to shimmy this down to the other end, leaving about two inches. And basically what you're just going to do is uh, take your pliers and pull the wires just like that. And if you, if you did weave too tight, then what you're going to do is just manually here, you're going to shimmy it all down and you can do it. You can get it down the wires. So that's what makes it a lot simpler, just by doing that. Now we do need to, um, like I said, shimmy it down, and then we we're in, we are going to end up with a lot of wires to deal with. But it's not going to be ten; it's only going to be five at a time. And then once we get in the middle, it's going to shorten up, so it's going to be a lot easier. So what I'll do is I'm just going to. Um, Make sure my weave is about here, two inches from the start, and then we're gonna start the new weave. Okay, so now we're gonna start the next portion of the bracelet. So what you wanna do is separate your five wires on this side, five wires up here. And what we will do is I wanna weave about two and a quarter, two and a half inches. Again, depending on the length of my bracelet. So what you can do is, again, if you're doing it shorter or longer, um, I would suggest adjusting your weave at the ends and in the middle. Um, because here it's going to be like uh, an inch on this side, an inch on this side. For the wires that we're going to do to taper, about an inch, less than that. No, about an inch, including the um, jump ring. So like I said, just adjust here and in the middle. 
and we're going to do two and a half inches here. Okay, so let's start the weave. So we don't have a lot of wires to manage, but they are long and we want to make sure that, you know, they don't get all tangled. So you want to make some channels up here, close down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, see I completed one rotation without going up yet, going up and around wire one and two, but now to start the new one, we're going up and over wire one and two. And we're going to do that three times. And what we're creating here, now see it's not compressed. I'm just laying them right on top of the wires. I don't want it too tight. Just like that. And then I'm going to go between wire one and two. Now I'm going to compress. So now we have this and we're, our weave is going to go up this way. So then you're gonna go up and around wire two and three, three times. Again, just laying it right on top of the wire. And then I'm gonna go between those two wires. And again. and then between. And then the last two wires, one, okay, and no. Now you're gonna compress, okay? I didn't go between those two wires because this weave is, we're just going to run the weaving wire around the back, and we're starting that again. One, two, three, okay? And, hold on a second. And when I go ahead and compress this, this is gonna be sitting forward. So it's gonna be a nice weave going like this, up and down. So I do that for two and a half inches, or the side, and then I'll be back to show you how to, we're going to do it on this end, where to start. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, so I ended up doing my length on this side here, two and a quarter inches. Okay, and I'm going to do the same length on this side. Now, let me just move out a little bit. To start the mirror image I, uh, on this side, because I don't want them going this way on this side, I want them to lay this way. So you are going to just... Cut your, I left my weaving wire here because I'm going to continue with this one once I'm done this side. And all you're going to do is anchor. Uh, I'm a little, okay, anchor your weaving wire by just going around once. You don't want it crowding too much uh, to start because then your weave is going to be a little bit off. And you're gonna do the same thing here. So we're going this way. So you wrap around three times. Then you go through between the two wires, just like we did on the bottom. It's just going in a different direction. The next two wires and the next two wires and the next two wires, and then you just repeat. So I'm not gonna bore you by repeating this again, because otherwise we're gonna have a big long video tutorial. So continue on these two wires until you get to this one. So these two are gonna be separate. And once you get to these two, remember you bring your wire back down and then you start down again until you reach this side. Now, um, this one I would suggest like you did, you measured it, but you want it exactly the same on this side. So maybe uh, 
if you haven't compressed it enough and and they look even but they're really not please just count your rotations and the rotations you're going to be counted like this so one two three four five six all the way up just do that many on this side then we are going to attach the whole piece together with this weaving wire and then we'll continue and i'll be back all right so i did the other side and as you can see here, to anchor my weave, I just went up the wires, single coils. In the grand scheme of things, you're not gonna see that. So I'm not gonna separate these now. I'm gonna get them as close together. And I counted my weaves and it's exactly the same thing. And this, when I finish this weave, it's I'm coming back down the back and we are going to start the weave as we did over here. So you're going up, and around wire one and two between wire one and two up and around wire two and three between wire two and three up and around wire three and four then between wire three and four and up and around wire four and five between wire four and five now we need to be careful because now we're attaching Okay, so make sure you compress everything. Get these wires as close as possible. Go up and around wire five and six, then between those wires, and now we're attached. And then you're gonna continue your way up as we did before. Now, then you will work your way down as we did when the this modified sumac weave at the beginning and going between these two wires here to because we need to just coil around wire nine once coming down and you'll find that as you're getting closer to the end it's getting a lot easier to manage your wires Okay, I'm going a little fast here because we did this at the beginning of the video. But now, this is still a little bit of a gap here, so I'm gonna really get that close. You know, the wire five and six there. Pay attention to that and then really get it as close as possible and continue your way down. Now, for me, using uh, my wire, uh, whoops, 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 my uh, weaving wire 26 gauge. I did a half an inch here in the middle. Okay, now you really wanna compress this. It's gonna be, a little, turn it over, compress it, use your pliers if you have to. But you really wanna get this compressed. You don't wanna start compressing when you have a weave this long. So just keep compressing and now it's nicely together and you're going to continue that weave so that rip that's one rotation then we go around again up around wire one and two between wire one and two and you're going to continue that now my actual just weaving part is six inches so when i put my my um uh, sorry ruler right here i have three inches here so, and then I'm gonna continue. So if you feel that when you're done, that it's not, let's say for example, it's not long enough, you can add weaves on this side and weaves on this side. Don't worry about taking it all apart. Uh, you can adjust the weave in the middle, okay? Just constantly get your ruler out. You really want everything to be you know symmetrical so this sh should be the same as the one at the end this should be the same as over here this you can do as wider as as little as you want I'm doing it a half an inch am I doing it half an inch hold on a second just a second one centimeter is what I'm doing one centimeter in the middle for me okay 
And then uh, I'm gonna let me do this little bit. And then because you want the mirror image, then you're gonna separate your wires again, five wires this side, five wires that side. You don't want the weave, see the weave's going this way. You don't want it going that way. You want it going this way. So mirror image, it's gonna look really interesting like that. You can see here. Okay, so let me get my length. I'll come back and I'll show you where to start to do the mirror image for this. Isn't that neat? Okay, I'll be back. Okay, so I did my little middle here. And instead of going up and around both wires, I'm just going to go up and around one wire right here. Okay, so that finishes that. And we're gonna separate our wires, and because we want the mirror image of the side, we're not starting here, we're gonna start in the middle. So you're just gonna bring your wire up and around, and you're gonna coil around the two wires three times. And that'll do the mirror image. And we're going down this way. And then on the other side, you're going to start your coils in the middle here. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. Two, three. And this, you know, this bracelet goes quite quickly. Okay. It does go pretty quick. Okay, and now we're going around the last two. Whoops, I went around three, did I go? Going around the last two, three times. One, two, three. And I'm just gonna make sure that's all compressed before I do anything. And wait, I went around four times, just a second. Three times, going up the back and going around the top two wires two times, uh, three times, sorry. So now you have the mirror image of the other side. So I'm gonna do my length here, then I'm gonna do my length here. So. When you finish here, just anchor your weave, cut yourself another piece and start with these two wires and go down this way, this way, this way, this way, okay? And then we're gonna reattach everything and then we're gonna start the clasp and I'll be back. All right guys, we're on the home stretch here. Now, here's one end and here's another end. I have a lot more wires on this end because they kind of move around when I'm working with it. So that's why I have a good two inches, if not a bit more. Okay, so here I did the same thing, the mirror image, and I attached them. All right, now we have 10 wires here and rather than having a square piece and then having to twirl them in, and we're gonna do something that is pretty neat. And I actually learned this from someone. It's a technique and I really like it. So we are gonna be tapering this in. You're gonna take the two middle wires and you're just gonna crisscross them over each other, like that. You're gonna take the next two wires, crisscross them over. Next two wires, crisscross them over. And you're gonna adjust this to your liking. And these two wires, crisscross them over. Like that. Now the last two wires we're leaving like that because this is gonna go like this. And these wires are going around Okay, and we're gonna attach them there. Now, what you can do to embellish this is you can put some beads in between each wire. Now, I did a test here and I brought out some beads. These are six millimeter 
and I'm just going to do a little test. If I throw one bead on here, like that, it gives it a little bit of a gap, but that's okay. Put a bead there, and I'm going to put a bead here. Again, these are six millimeter. I, you can even use an eight millimeter, okay? Just gonna give a little something. Now this is a mixed uh, beads. I'm using a transparent red luster mix. And I'm not gonna worry about which beads I'm picking up. Okay, now that I have this and I put my two beads on, I want one wire to go over this one and I'm gonna bring around the back so the bead sits there. And I'm gonna take the wire here, the first wire that we crisscrossed and put it over the back. Like that. Then I'm gonna put two more beads, one, and two. Okay, now we need to crisscross the next two wires. So I want these this these two wires to sort of go like this. And I'm gonna push that in and then push the next one in behind. Here's the back. It's just crisscrossing. We're not cutting anything yet. Then I'm gonna put two more beads. on each of those wires. Okay, where am I here? I'm here. So I'm going to push this one back and push this one back. So it gives a little something. You don't have to put the beads, by the way, if you don't want to. The last, I'm gonna put the last beads You can use fire polish, you can use bicones, you can use crystals, whatever, okay, it doesn't matter. Now, I'm just gonna tighten everything up and then the last two on top of the bead, pushing that in the back, bringing that in the back. See how nice that is? How that gives it a little something? Okay, now time to get our cutters out and our pliers. All right, so time to cut. So we have this, this little crisscross thing happening. Now we're gonna turn the back. Okay, so now you're gonna take your cutters and we're gonna start with the two ones that we crossed over, okay? <clears throat> and we're gonna cut it not too short because we want to, I wanna see what I'm doing here. Let me just get these out of the way, these out of the way, we do those later. So you're gonna cut right here. Snip. And we're gonna snip the other side. Okay. So we have that. You're not gonna leave it like that, right? So you need to take your pliers and you need to just grab the end and turn. Grab the end here. It's gonna take a little bit of finagling. I may have cut it a little bit too short, but it's okay. Grab the end and twist you do not if you are selling this you do not want anything sticking out and poking anyone now I turn them in and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pliers and pinch and pinch now we do the next one okay so I have this one I'm gonna cut right here. Just do one at a time. Take your pliers, grab the end, twist.
twist and pinch. Grabbing the next wire. Snip. I have a little bit of a tail there. Grab it, turn it, pinch. Next one, snip. Grab with your pliers, turn, and pinch. I have to push that down a bit. And we do with the next one. Now, I need to look at my front because this one seems to be a little bit loosey-goosey. So I'm going to take it and pull it. Always check your front, eh, before you snip your wires. Snip, and that's a little bit too long. I'll snip it again. Grab. Turn. And pinch. Check your front. Looking good. Now we have my last two, which is the ones on the top. Now, these wires, what I want you to do is crisscross them. Just crisscross. We're going to deal with that after. Okay. This is right at the top. Just snip. Snip. Take them. Turn them in. Turn it in. You want a nice professional look on the back, not a jumbled mess. Twist it. Pinch down. And then what you're going to do is just run your fingers, make sure you don't feel anything. Okay? So, now here's the front. We will, you have one on the right, one on the left, crisscross. Push the one on the right up, like that. Take this one, oh, just wrap it around twice, just like that. You're gonna snip that away. You will take the end and pinch that closed. Okay, so I did it on both sides, and now we have these. Now you, you can cut them down a little bit. Now before we start doing the clasp, what I want you to do is just take these and start separating them. Just separate them to make a nice channel. Or you don't have to separate them. You can keep them closed. It's fine. So nice separation there. Now, what you're going to do here, nice separation. Now, what you're going to do with the ends is this. I'm going to snip a little bit off just because I just need to make a little loop. And take my round nose pliers and I'm going to go about in the middle and I'm just going to turn like that. So I have that. I'll adjust it with my pliers. Pinch. And do it to the other side. Same little loop, turn, so I have that, and then you want to adjust with your pliers and pinch them closed. And now I'm going to show you how 
I'm going to open this up a little bit more. I'm going to play with this. Just make sure that they're nice and exactly the same. Now I'm going to show you how to do jump rings and to make these this little S clasp. If you don't want to make this, you can use a lobster claw, that's fine, or any clasp of your choice. And if you have jump rings already made, just pop them on, but I'll show you how I make my jump rings in the clasp. I'll be back. All right, so for my clasp, I cut about three inches. I'm going to put that aside. Now I'm going to take my little step maker here, and I'm going to make some jump rings. Now the jump rings, I'm just keeping my wire on the spool and I'm gonna get the smallest one because I don't need big jump rings. I'm going to, whoops, I bent that one, it's okay. And I'm just gonna turn it around this. Just like that. Just like that. Now I'm going to cut away this. Now I want to get, now flush cutters, um, when I turn it this way and I snip here, it's going to be flush. To make the other side, I'm going to turn on this side and I'm going to just go right in there and cut. So now I have one jump ring. Now, because I don't want, I want it to be flush on this side, I'm gonna again turn it and I'm just gonna snip off the end, just a little, a little bit. And I'm turning it around and I'm gonna cut like this. So now I have two jump rings and you can, make a bunch of jump rings doing that and I do that I make a lot of jump rings and uh, you take your pliers and you just open them up now just to show you how nice and flush that is now if I wasn't paying attention and I was just cutting I'm going to show you what it looks like so let me get the end and now I'm just going to cut like this snip so I think I have a jump ring here, but look at the ends. Not flush whatsoever. And I would not use that as a jump ring. So flush cutters are really going to cut them nice and straight, okay? So now I cut two jump rings and what I'm gonna do so I'm just going to take one, open it up. So this is like uh, dead soft, right? So, but the more you play with it, the more it will um, work harden. Now I don't have my other pliers right next to me and this is not the best thing. I'm using my round nose pliers. And I'm just gonna close that up. And you want to just make sure it's nice and closed. Now, because of the way I cut it, you don't see those little jagged ends. Now, if your bracelet isn't long enough, put more jump rings. Okay, now I'm going to close that up. Properly. You want it really nice and closed. And now what we're going to do is get that S clasp with the three inches. Now, maybe you don't need three inches, but depending on how, hold on a second, where's my other thing? I did this with a very small loop here. So, What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it like this and I'm going to bend it around just 
like that. Now we have that. Okay. And I'm just going to open it a little bit because this is my class part. Now, the end, depending, I can tell, and I'm just going to snip a little bit off. So I have that. I'm going to take my round nose pliers, and this is just to give it some kind of a, where's my other thing here? Just to give it that little swirl there. So I'm going to use my round nose pliers. I'm going to grab the end with the smallest end of my round nose. Grab it on there. And I'm going to turn that into a little swirl. Just like that. It's a little bendy, a little out of whack. So I'm just going to take my pliers and put it back into whack. It's going to be some adjusting. So now I have this. I want to bend it down like this. Now I'm going to take my pliers right about here and I'm going to bend it. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to create uh, hold on a second. I'm going to grab my round nose pliers. I'm going to go right about here. Okay. And I'm just going to wrap it around my pliers like this. Now, grab that circle with your pliers tight. And you're just going to take another pair of pliers and you're going to wrap it around. Not too many times, just once or twice, just like that. Just like that. You're going to take your cutters. You're going to snip off the excess. Now I have a little bit sticking out, so I really want to get my pliers and pinch that down. Everything's sitting next to each other like that. Okay. So this is your little clasp. And what I would also recommend you do, if you have a hammer and a hammer block, to just hammer the end here. It's gonna make things a lot stronger and it looks a little bit more professional and I will do that later. So that's my little clasp. And what I'm gonna do with my jump ring I'm just going to see how I put this on. I'm going to put on this end. Open up my jump ring. Place my clasp on there. And close my jump ring. Now I'm closing this with my hand because it's a dead soft wire. But if I continuously do this, it starts to work hard in the the metal and I will do that. I may even hammer the um, jump ring. All right, so now we have this. We have our clasp on, we have our jump ring, now we need to shape. So you wanna be extremely gentle with this and just run your finger down shaping this. It's not going to be an exact circle because our wrists aren't an exact circle. So you're just going to very gently do this. Don't do any fast movements like this, okay? Because then you are going to ruin your bracelet. Just continuously, see now I'm turning it into a circle. Be very gentle with it. At this point, 
I'm just going to try it on. Turn it, and now I know what to do. So basically here, you need to bend. Your bracelet will not be in a big, in a perfect circle. That's not what you want. You want it kind of in an oval like this. And here you have it. Put your clasp on. That's the tutorial. Thank you for watching. I have a written tutorial on how to make this bracelet step by step, picture by picture. And I count the wires and I tell you exactly what to do. And um, if you like this tutorial, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, subscribe because I, you will be notified when I put up a new tutorial. That's it. You're not going to be bombarded with emails or anything like that. Just Jennifer put up another tutorial. You can choose to watch it or not. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you at the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.